Hello students, today I will continue with the same chapter plant life and I will begin with the topic flower. Flower is the most attractive part of the plant. It produces seed for the plant and is the organ of sexual reproduction in the plant. I will teach you the different parts of flower. There are four whorls of which a flower is made up of. The outermost whorl is this calyx, the green leafy structures that you can see. It is also called as sepals. Calyx is there for the protection of flower during the bud stage. And since it is green in color, it also prepares food for the plant by the process of photosynthesis. The next whorl is corolla, these brightly colored petals. They are brightly colored to attract insects for the process of pollination. The third whorl, you can see these yellow structures. This whorl is called as androsium. It is the male reproductive part of the flower. It is made up of a filament and anther. Anther produces pollen grains. Pollen grains contain the male reproductive cell of the plant. The fourth and the innermost whorl is this gynosium which is considered as the female reproductive part of the flower. It is made up of stigma, style and the solen basal portion called as the ovary. Gynosium is also known as carpal or pistil. Now we come to pollination. The transfer of pollen grains from stamen to the stigma of a flower is called as pollination. Pollination is of two types, self-pollination and cross-pollination. In self-pollination, the pollen grains from the anther are transferred to the stigma of the same flower or of another flower on the same plant. Whereas in cross-pollination, the pollen grains are transferred from anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower located on a different plant of the same kind. Now there are some agents of cross-pollination which help in the process of cross-pollination. They are wind. Some plants are pollinated by wind. The pollen grains of these flowers, they are light, smooth and they are non-sticky and they are produced in large quantities. They get blown away when the wind blows along with the wind and they get settled on stigma of these flowers. The stigma of these flowers is hairy and well exposed to catch wind borne pollen grains. For example, flowers of wheat, rice, corn, etc. are pollinated by wind. Water pollinated plants, the plants which grow in water, aquatic plants such as hydrilla and vellicinaria, they are pollinated by water. The flowers of water pollinated plants, they are small and non-showy but the pollen grains are light and waterproof due to the presence of a waxy coating. Stigma is long and sticky and these light pollen grains, they are carried along with the flow of water and they get deposited on the stigma of another flower. Insects are also agent of pollination. Insects such as bees, butterflies, moths, etc. When they fly on top of these flowers, the pollen grains which are sticky in nature, they stick to different body parts of these insects. And when the insects sit on another flower, these pollen grains, they fall on the stigma of the flowers. Flowers such as china rose and sunflower are pollinated by insects. Now we come to fertilization. The fusion of male and female gametes to form a zygote is called as fertilization. I will explain you this with the help of a diagram. This diagram will explain the process of fertilization. When a pollen grain lands on the stigma, it starts developing a pollen tube into the gynosium. The male gamete enters this pollen tube and it finally reaches the ovary where ovules are present. Inside the ovule, the female reproductive cell is present and this male gamete finally fuses with the female reproductive cell. This leads to the formation of a zygote 
and finally the zygote develops into an embryo. Once this process of fertilization takes place, fruit is formed. What happens after fertilization? The petals, sepals, stamen, they all wither away and fall. Style and stigma also fall. Only ovary remains intact. Only this part remains intact. This enlarges, becomes fleshy and forms the fruit of the plant. And these ovules, they develop into seeds. So the ovules form the seeds of the fruit. Parts of a fruit. The different parts of a fruit are mentioned here. Once the ovary becomes mature, it forms a ripe fruit. It consists of certain layers which are collectively called as pericarp. Pericarp has three layers. Epicarp or exocarp which is the outermost layer of the fruit and it is mostly edible. Mesocarp is the middle layer of the fruit which is thick, fleshy and juicy part. Endocarp is the hard part inside the fruit which contains the seed. So these are the three layers of pericarp. Epicarp or exocarp, mesocarp and endocarp. Now we come to seed. As we all know, a seed is a fertilized and ripened ovule. A seed contains certain parts. I will tell you about those parts. This is the seed coat. Seed coat is the hard outer covering of the seed. It is also called as tester. It protects the seed and its work is to absorb water and becomes soft. As a result, it gets easily removed during the process of germination. Then next is the embryo. You can see it is labeled over here. Embryo is a tiny structure at the base of the seed leaves. Seedlings grow from these embryo. The embryo contains two parts, radical and plumule. Radical develops into roots after germination and plumule grows into the shoot after germination. The cotyledons. Cotyledons are special structures in the seed that surround the embryo. They are also called as the seed leaves. Certain seeds have two cotyledons, so they are called as dicot seed. Certain seeds have only one cotyledon, so they are called as monocot seed. Germination of seed. The process by which seed grows into a young plant, it is called as germination. Certain conditions are required for the germination of seed. Water, sunlight and air are necessary conditions for germination of seed. During germination, the seeds, they need water and they grow in size. The seed coat, the seed coat, it softens and burst opens. Water changes the food stored in the seed into a soluble form to be utilized by the growing embryo. Sunlight is required for the process of photosynthesis. Oxygen present in the air is utilized for the process of respiration. Energy is released by respiration which is used for the growth of the seedling. Now types of germination. There are two ways by which seeds germinate. They are epigeal germination and hypogeal germination. In case of epigeal germination, the whole cotyledon comes out of the soil. They provide food to the growing seedling for a day or two. Then they dry up and fall off. In case of hypogeal germination, the cotyledon remain within the soil and they never come up and this type of germination is basically seen in the seeds of pea and maize.